Welcome to the Holy Land and this site of Masada. A Masada is a very famous site here in Israel. Uh, some very, very sad things uh, took place here. And uh, so we're going to tell you about those. And uh, we're going to be showing you some other places uh, uh, on Masada here as well. We're choosing to film right here because it's right here that the about 1,000 uh, last Jewish zealots uh, who rebelled against the Romans when, Rome, when uh, Israel was falling in about 70 AD, and they were the last stronghold hold before uh, Rome completely conquered Israel and took it as a result of uh, prophecies re regarding Christ because of the Jews rejection of him as their Messiah and Christ prophesied. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But anyway, you can see the ramp uh, down below there where the Romans finally uh, built this huge ramp and got up to Masada and then um, they found that the 1,000 inhabitants approximately had committed suicide. So it's a very somber place and you're going to learn some fascinating things about it. So let's uh, look at this place here. Uh, Masada is located uh, by the Dead Sea about 40 miles southeast of Jerusalem. Right along the Dead Sea overlooks the, uh, uh, the Dead Sea. It's a natural flat mountain that rises up from the valley floor some 1,000 feet. It is like a huge column with sheer cliffs on each side that makes it virtually unreachable. So for this reason, uh, there was a fortress set up here. Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah lie a bit to the south from here along the Dead Sea. And uh, you can see that here in this video. Uh, the Masada here is uh, located in a desert region, and as we mentioned, uh, the desert region, the Dead Sea, is approximately around a thousand feet below sea level. And so this column rises up from that, uh, from the valley floor, some 1,000 uh, feet as well. So, Masada was one of three fortified fortresses that King Herod had built to be able to escape from his enemies and from which to protect his territory. So, Masada was originally built by Herod, um, who you probably remember as the one who killed the children in Bethlehem. That was that Herod. Uh, he's the one who was the ruler at that time. He's the one who built Caesarea, the maritime port um, north of uh, uh, Joppa, Tel Aviv. He's the one that built the Herodian. Uh, he built Masada. He was a master builder, so he's the one that uh, built this. And it uh, was a stronghold of the Israelites that existed after the destruction uh, by the Romans in A.D. Uh, it was the last stronghold uh, that, was, that was conquered by the Romans. So uh, the Israelites had it. Herod built it. Uh, Christ prophesied that the nation would fall uh, in 70 A.D. As prophesied, it did fall. And then this uh, Masada was conquered in about 73 um, A.D. So Masada was fortified with elaborate water systems uh, that were fed by diverting uh, different uh, streams uh, from the nearby mountains that were higher. They would they run them in channels and then they'd run them along the, the walls of the uh, Masada to, uh, to get water. So they had big huge cisterns. It had elaborate swimming pools up here on top. Um, it was really, it had all the luxuries that uh, were afforded at that time. Um, on Masada, King Herod built 15 storehouses for food. Some said enough for 10,000 men for 10 years. So uh, it was very, very fortified. And as we mentioned, as a consequence of Israel rejecting Christ as their Messiah, Christ foretold that Jerusalem would be destroyed along with the nation of Israel as well. So. Uh, the fall of the nation of Israel that was foretold by Christ and by Zechariah um, had been prophesied and the result Masada was the last stronghold. So I'll uh, just read a passage of scripture in Luke 19 that talks about the destruction of the nation of Israel by Christ. This is Luke 19:40, and he says, And when he drew near the city, this was on Palm Sunday as he was coming down uh, the triumphal entry, and as he, drew, uh, as he drew near the city and saw the people, he wept over it saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes, for the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, and you and your children with you. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. So I want to uh, make clear that while the people on Masada here were noble, zealots, God-fearing people, uh, the reality is as the righteous always suffer with uh, the wicked, 
uh, so the majority of the country, the leaders of the country had rejected Christ, so as a result uh, the country fell as prophesied by Christ as we have just seen. And then in Zechariah 14.2 it says, For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses plundered, and the women raped. Half of the city shall go into exile, but the rest of the people shall not be cut off from the city. So a prophecy of, of Zechariah as well. So. That's the backdrop. Now let's look at exactly what happened here on Masada with the approximately 1,000 uh, Jewish zealots that committed suicide here on top of this mountain. As I said, we're filming this because right below is the ramp where the Romans finally got up to the mountain and it's right here in this area where the Jews then decided they were going to commit suicide rather than uh, yield or surrender to the uh, Romans. There were approximately 967 Jewish zealots who had fled from Jerusalem and the surrounding areas. They were national freedom fighters who opposed Roman rule. They fled to Masada and conquered it and lived there. And they inherited in this conquest all the stored food and water which King Herod had stocked. So they were able to come here, these, uh, these uh, Jewish freedom fighter zealots, and they were able to conquer this and they took it over. And with it they inherited massive amounts of food, as we mentioned, enough for 10,000 people for about uh, 10 years. So the Israelites continued to rebel against the Romans so that in the fulfillment of the prophecies of Christ and Isaiah in 70 AD, Jerusalem was totally taken over by the Romans. Uh, in Gamla, north of here, north of uh, the Sea of Galilee, uh, there were um, freedom fighters as well that many of them committed suicide, were driven off of a cliff. So the nation was falling in around 70 AD and right here in 73 AD, is when things began to fall here. So from Jerusalem came the 10th Roman Army Legion under the commander by the name of Silva uh, and Masada fell in 73 uh, AD. Now this Roman Legion built a wall around the base of Masada and uh, much of it using Israel's slave labor. So the freedom fighters were up here. The Jews watched their uh, fellow uh, slaves, the, the Jews that, ha that had already been taken as slaves by the Romans, they watched them build the ramp. A lot of their Jewish fellow countrymen built the ramps. That's one of the reasons why the, 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 the freedom zealots, uh, Jews up here, did not uh, attack so much when they were building because they would have killed their own um, countrymen and they didn't, they, they didn't not feel good about that. So um, the, the Romans decided to build a ramp up here. It took them months to do it. We don't know exactly how long, but it took them quite a while to build the siege ramp up. And then they moved battering rams and things up. So when the Romans reached the top of Masada, the Jewish zealots realized they were going to be conquered and tried to prevent the Romans from breaking through the wall by building an interior wall inside. So as the Romans were getting up, they built this interior wall inside, another wall inside the main wall so that they could buy some time and try to just protect themselves. Well, they realized that they were going to be conquered because the Romans got up here and then they lit that uh, the main wall on fire and then they began to tear down the interior wall as well. So they reached up here in the evening and they realized that the Jewish uh, freedom fighters up here, zealots, realized that it was over. They realized they were going to be conquered. So they had a decision to make. Would they surrender or would they take the choice that an, uh, the only free person could take, and that would be uh, their lives. They had seen in Gamla, and they had seen in the other parts of Israel, the Romans were a very uh, ruthless, uncompassionate people, and the Romans were very, very angry because they had spent months down here in the hot, blazing sun to reach these people. They, In their view, in the Romans' view, they were rebellious people. So the Jewish zealots up here saw in Gamla what had happened. They saw in the rest of the nation of Israel what was happening and how the Romans treated them and so that they knew that if they surrendered that their women would be raped, they would be killed or be made slaves and they did not want that. So they chose rather than to yield and surrender to the Romans, they chose to take their lives. So what did they do? Uh, during the evening, during the night, uh, the Romans went back down because the Romans decided they were going to attack this the next morning. So they went back down that evening and so the night before, the Jewish zealots and their uh, families uh, gathered together and a speech was given by their leader, Elisar.
And Elisar said with passion, it was an impassioned speech about how God had not created them to be slaves and about what would happen to them if they gave in to the Romans. And this is what he proposed. The Romans are angry with us and will probably kill most of us. Those who are not killed will be mistreated and forced to be slaves. Our women will be raped and violated, and our children tortured and forced to be slaves. Now you have to understand the Jews did not like being slaves. They were slaves in Egypt and they were taken into captivity. Uh, then they came back into the country and then the Romans took over. So they were tired of being slaves. So they did not want to go back to that. But more than that, they realized that the Romans were ruthless and that they were going to uh, kill most of them, torture them, take their women, rape them, torture their children. So they, they chose the path of suicide. So. Uh, Elisar continued to say, he said, the only option we have as free people is to take our own lives. So the men gathered in a special meeting and drove lots picking out ten courageous men who knew about killing and understood how to die. Then every father went home and killed their wives and children. So they had a meeting and uh, the, the professional soldiers, they gathered together and they said, okay, you men, you kill your own family, your, your wife and your children, and then they all gathered back together and the ten professional fighting men then killed the other men. And then these other men, uh, then this, these, these ten fighting men, then one man killed the other nine and then the last man fell upon his own sword. So now it is told because Josephus and other historians wrote about the account that took place up here with the Jewish zealots and it is told that two people, a woman and a child, escaped from up here and they're the ones who actually told then the others, uh, historians and other people, exactly what happened. So that's uh, the main way that the account happened. Other, uh, obviously the Romans uh, then had their version and they, they uh, uh, told it as well. So anyway, rather than uh, surrender, they decided uh, suicide. So, these zealots chose to die by suicide rather than to be conquered by the Romans and, and abused or killed. So, um, what can we learn from this somber place called Masada? Well, while the zealots themselves were devoted servants to God, they lived among a country that had rejected Christ as their Messiah. So while these people were devoted to God, they lived among a people who had rejected their Messiah. So the, the reality is, is the righteous always suffer with the, uh, the, the evil, with the wrongdoers. So as a result of Christ being rejected, the prophecy was given that the country would become, would once again be taken into captivity and conquered. And so the sad reality is, as we mentioned, that the righteous suffer at the hands of the wicked, along with the wicked. In almost every instance in which a country falls, it is always due mainly to the decisions of its leaders. So leaders, the leaders of a country are the ones who direct its direction, its morality, its laws. Um, and so when, when a country falls, it always has one common factor and that is the leadership of a country or nation are the ones who normally direct direct that. So we see that in, in the historical accounts of, of the nation of Israel. It's always the leaders, the kings who did evil, Jeroboam who led the nation astray, built idols, things of that nature. So in the case of these Jewish zealots who feared God, they paid the price for the rest of the country's rejection of Christ. And today it's the same. While there are many righteous people in a country, God will still judge it because of the sinful and immoral decisions leaders make. So it's the leadership that sets the course of a nation's welfare, both financially and morally. And Israel didn't return to be a nation again until 1948. And this was due again to God's sovereign plan for them. God prophesied that he would bring them back again as a nation. And it's a miracle that after almost 2,000 years, the nation of Israel was born again, came back to as a country in 1948, and now is a thriving, prosperous uh, country. However, the price Israel paid for their rejection of Christ cost them dearly. Christ prophesied along with many other prophets in the Old Testament that God would punish the nation for their rebellion. He led them into the deportion, the northern tribes, into uh, the Assyrian, in the Assyrian kingdom in 722. They went into deportation because of their disobedience to God. And in 586 uh, BC, the southern two tribes, uh, Judah, Benjamin, they went into captivity into Babylonia. So uh, they had suffered that, and then they came back as a nation, and then Christ 
came, visited them, they rejected their Messiah. So their punishment cost them dearly. Their rejection of their Messiah cost them dearly. And these people here, although God-fearing, uh, paid the price, and then the nation would not be born again, come back as a nation again until 1948. So it's a real somber reality of uh, what took place here. Um, in no way, uh, we're, we, no way would we say that taking your life is right. Uh, far from that, uh, we're just counting, just telling you the story that these people, rather than uh, uh, surrender and see their wives and children uh, beaten, tortured, raped, and then them probably made slave labors, labors, uh, they just that's what they decided. I don't think that was the right thing to do. I don't think that we should take our own lives. I think that the sovereign God Almighty is the one who determines our day and our days are in his hands, our hairs of our head are numbered. So I don't believe personally that it's right to commit suicide. I believe the Bible teaches against it. I don't believe that these people here should have done that, but this is what they did. And so we tell you this story, uh, and this is what happened on Masada. And so today, uh, millions of people come here to visit Masada, to relive and to experience and see for themselves uh, what happened here on Masada. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you have uh, had some uh, thoughts to think about. Um, these Jewish zealots, they were God-fearing. Uh, they thought they were doing what was right, but I don't believe that uh, committing suicide was the right choice. So anyway, God bless you for watching, and uh, hopefully you watch more of our videos. So God bless.